Now let's take a short quiz on the indifference curves. First question. At equilibrium, the slope of the indifference curve is A. Equal to the slope of the budget line B. Greater than the slope of the budget line C. Smaller than the slope of the budget line or D. None. C. Equilibrium is the point where budget line and IC meet. So at that point, the slope of both the indifference curve and the budget line is equal because they both are tangent to each other at that point. So the slope becomes equal. Let's see, that's the answer. Second question, indifference curves between income and leisure for an individual are generally they generally be convex to the origin. Indifference curve, it, it is one of the properties of the indifference curve that indifference curves are convex to the origin. They always slope downward from left to right and are generally convex to the origin. Now in this case, we take income on x-axis and leisure on y-axis. Now since you have to maintain the same level of satisfaction, it is important that it is the indifference curve is convex to the origin because income also increases my satisfaction at the same time leisure also increases my satisfaction. So if I have to maintain the same level of satisfaction, if one if one variable increases, the other will have to go down. That is, let's say this is where I am at point A, wherein I am at the income level of X and leisure level of Y. Now, if I increase my income level, if my income, if my income level increases, my leisure level would have to fall. If this increases, this will have to fall because more income gives me more satisfaction. But I have to maintain the same level of satisfaction. So the satisfaction derived from leisure will have to go down. How will it go down when I reduce my leisure time? So the curve will be convex to the origin. The answer is convex to the origin. Next, in case of right angled indifference curve, the goods are A. Perfect complements B. Perfect substitutes C. Inferior goods D. Giffen goods What kind of goods do you think the indifference curve is right angled? It is L shaped. Correct. It is in the case of perfect complements. Let's check. Yes, that's the answer. Next question. A consumer buys two commodities X and Y. He would be in equilibrium when A. MU of X divided by P of X equals to MU of Y divided by P of Y. Second, MU of X divided by MU of Y equals to MU of M, that is MU of money. MU of X divided by P of X 
equals to mu of y divided by p of x. Finally, p of x divided by p of y equals to mu of m. We have already done this when the consumer is at equilibrium, the marginal utility of product x divided by its price equals to the marginal utility of product y divided by its price. That's the answer. Next, the slope of IC curve is always downward, upward, straight line or can be all. Correct. It's always downward. IC curve always slope downwards. The substitution effect of fall in the price of commodity will lead to a upward movement in indifference curve, b downward movement in indifference curve, c movement from lower IC to a higher IC, d none. What do you think will happen when the price of a product falls? When the price of the product falls, what happens is you tend to shift from a lower IC curve to a higher IC curve. Why? Because what happens is when the price falls, you tend to get lesser amount of satisfaction from it. This is explained why inferior goods when the price falls lesser number of those goods are purchased because the satisfaction from those goods increases. So as to maintain the same level of satisfaction higher number of those goods are purchased. Again what happens is your budget line shifts forward. So because of these two reasons you tend to move on an higher indifference curve. Let's check. Yes. That's the answer. Next. When indifference curve is L-shaped then the two goods will be we've already done this question. It is L-shaped. It is right angled. So the goods would be perfect complementary goods. I've already explained this case taking an example of shoes, a pair of shoes. A left shoe and a right shoe are perfect complements of each other. Next, the convexity of indifference curve is due to A. Declining marginal rate of substitution B. Rising marginal rate of substitution C. Constant marginal rate of substitution D. None of the above I have already told you that when the marginal rate of substitution is declining, you have a curve which is convex shaped. When the MRS is declining, you will have a curve which is convex shaped. It is shaped or it is curved towards the origin. However, when the MRS is rising, the shape of the curve would be concave. That 
that means it would be curved or it would be shaped farther from the origin and finally if the MRS is constant the curve would always be a straight line it will always be a straight line if the MRS is constant so in this question they have asked us the convexity of indifference curve is due to the answer would be declining marginal rate of substitution Let's check yes that's the answer